In this video, let me talk about the HP Spectre X360. You could see the different ports that this laptop has, especially the camera kill switch. That is your one of the size. First of all, let's remove the two screws that are holding the back housing of the unit. Then remove the, the rubber strips. You have to lift them over. And then under it, you have to take out the screws. Once you do that, slide over the cover to release it. You can see the different components that this laptop has, CPU, GPU, the fan, battery, memory, RAM, the speakers, and the NVMe M2 SSD. First thing to do, you have to remove the battery connector. Below the the metal, you are able to find the memory RAM. You have to a slot. On this case, this one has eight gigs, total sixteen, eight gigs on each slot. Of course, to remove the RAM, you don't have to do the full teardown. To put back the metal, you only have to press it down, play a little with it to lock it. To upgrade the SSD, you have to remove the screws, take out the Intel Optim SSD. And there you could see the spec for the SSD. And now it's time to take out all the screws to be able to lift the battery. Before doing that, you have to remove the, the connector from the speakers. There is one on the left and the other on the right side of it. After that, we could leave the battery. We could proceed now by lifting the locker for the flex, and we could start removing the flex from the motherboard. You only have to slide it over after lifting the locked, the little plastic. And then you have the different flexes there for the trackpad, the keyboard, backlit, and the micro SD card, and so on. After that, you have to follow the numbers from the heat sink. You could start removing all the screws. There are three screws for each side, one for the CPU and the other one for the GPU. That's the heat sink. You are able to remove the thermal paste and reapply a new thermal paste after doing this. On this case, we're not going to do it, but you feel free to do it. You could take a look of watch another video on how to do it. Once you remove the three, the three screws from the fans and remove the connector, you're able to leave them if you want to clean them or replace them. Now you can remove the heat sink from the GPU, the graphical chipset, and then you could leave the fans. After doing that, you have the connectors on the top side. You have one from coming from the DC jack port and the other one for the screen. On the left side, you have the wireless car, on this case, a little chipset that you have to leave the plastic and after that, disconnect the antennas. Next to it, you have a connector and a little flex.
majority of the flex they have the plastic locker so you just have to lift it and it's like over the flex now it's time to remove all the screws that are holding the motherboard make sure you put the screw together so in that way you don't confuse them or you don't put them on the wrong section Let's continue removing the screws. You have to leave the little tape in there. And then you could proceed by lifting the motherboard. There is a little flex on the left side. They have to be careful, don't break it. Now you have a closer look of the motherboard. To remove the bracket for the full assembly for the screen, you have to take out the two screws that are holding each side, one on the left and the other on the right side. Make sure you keep those screws together. And make sure you remove the tape that is on the right side that, ha that has the flex, the flex for the screen. Let's lift a little bit. And then lift the little bracket. And do the same thing on the other side. Now you have a closer look of the connectors. Coming out of the screen. And there you see the entire motherboard. After that, let me give you a quick tour around the top cover of the laptop. I didn't do the keyboard part, but you have to remove the metal that are holding it and then leave the, the actual keyboard. On that section, we have the power jack, the port. You have to remove one of the screws and then lift it over and then reroute the cable. Now it's time to put the motherboard back in. Make sure you leave all the flexes, all the connector and leave them on top of the motherboard. So in that way when you screw it in, you don't block any of the flexes or, or damage it. Let's center the motherboard and I want you to center it. You could put the uh, screws on the motherboard so in that way when you are lifting and put it back the screen, the actual motherboard doesn't drop. Let's put the screws back for the brackets. There are two screws, remember? Two on the right and two on the left. Now it's time to put the fans. Once you center the fan, you can go ahead and put the other fan on the other side. Put the screws on it and put back the connector. Remember three screws on each fan and one connector for each of them. Once you secure the fans, you could go ahead and put the, the connector from the speaker back on place and the one from the fan too. Remember that the actual, that little cable that I'm holding for the speaker, 
that goes around the battery. When you put the battery, you could route the cable. And then let's go ahead and put back all the flexes, the back lid. That's the orange one. You could refer it to the manual um, if you want to see what is what is each, each each flex about. That's the the long one, the more like thick one. That's the one for the for the keyboard, the bigger one. The little orange one is for the backlit. That is the one that provides lights to the keyboard. Once you enter the actual flex, you have to lock it with the plastic, the little plastic. You have to bring it down. The last one is the one coming from the micro SD card. For any other flex, if you have a question, please refer to the manual. So in that way, you know which one is, is which. You have some connector on the top on the right side that we have to put back. Always double check that you are putting on the right place and the right position. Now let's go ahead and put the connector back in for the power jack and the one for the screen. The one for the screen is the black one and with the little flex is the slim one. That is the, the one coming from the screen. Let's just slide it over and lock it. Be careful with those flexes, don't damage it, please. On the left side, we have the one for the wireless chipset. On this case, a chipset that is soldered to the motherboard. In most of the laptop, you're able to replace the wireless card. On this one, you can't. Could be two things. One other thing could be because they want to do more compact laptop and slimmer. So they are trying to minimize the, the size of the, the size of the parts of, for, the, for the laptop. Now let's put the plastic back on top of the wireless chipset. And let's go ahead and put back the heat sink. Remember we have a uh, follow the numbers and make sure you replace the thermal paste on both of them. Once you put back the heat sink, you have to follow the numbers one, two, and three. The actual numbers are on top of the heat sink right down. So there's no confusion about it. Now let's go ahead and put the battery back in and put the screws back on place. The SSD back on place at the top. And once you put everything back in and the SSD, you go ahead and put back the connector for the battery. Let's put the cover plastic back on place. And then let's put the cover back in the laptop. You have to put it down and then slide it in to be able to grab the, the brackets inside. And then let's go ahead and put the screw back. And put the rubber a strip. You have to use the same glue, apply some pressure with the hands. And you have to accommodate it on top. 